So the discrepancy model is one of the ways that um, specific learning disabilities can be identified um, in California under IDEA. We can also, so what that means is when we're doing an assessment for learning disability, we're going to want to see a discrepancy between cognition, so overall intelligence and IQ, and um, academic achievement. Um, it's, it's really number related. Um, it's, it relies on gathering standardized assessment data and comparing scores because you want to see that wide gap. However, there are other ways to assess for learning disabilities still under the law. One is response to intervention. So looking at response to intervention data over time, that does require a school to have a very solid system of response to intervention being implemented. So perhaps a student has been receiving reading intervention for a long time, but not making substantial progress. Um, that could be another way that we start looking at learning disability. Um, and then the other way is through patterns of strength and weaknesses, which we could do informally, I think a little bit more, but a what a lot of people do is spend time um, looking at score numbers and comparison and looking for um, standardized measure scores, patterns of strengths and weaknesses, um, and where we see those discrepancies as well. Um, but the other thing we have to look for when we're looking at learning disability is processing. So there does have to be a deficit in processing areas. So visual, um, uh, auditory, there's also um, cognitive abilities, which looks at like attention and memory and things like that. So um, kind of have to have all those things.